Hello, thanks for dialing in. I, I'm very pleased to present some of our most recent data about next generation cytogenetics using BioNano's genome imaging for optical mapping. Uh, here's my disclosure slide. If I have to explain the technology that BioNano offers to people, I usually refer to this as next generation cytogenetics. And what do I mean with that? Imagine we're looking here at a chromosome one in classical GTG karyotyping. Then imagine you're enabled to look at each and every chromosomal subband uh, with additional 1,000 labels per band on average. That is quite exactly what BioNano can offer. And as such, it offers karyotyping with 500,000 bands genome wide and therefore offers uh, a 10,000 fold improved sensitivity over karyotyping. And it still maintains all the advantages of karyotyping. That is, a genome wide analysis will get positional information, uh, and in principle, you can reach single molecule resolution. So, how does it now really work in the lab? What we do first is we isolate DNA from uh, intact cells or nuclei. And we do that very carefully to maintain extremely long DNA molecules, some of which reach several megabases in size. We then label that DNA, uh, and we do that by adding a fluorescent label to a six-mere DNA recognition motive. And these labeled DNA molecules are then flushed into bionano chips that consist of nanochannels. And each nanochannel exactly fits one labeled DNA molecule. These molecules are then imaged, uh, basically by a high resolution microscope that is included. Um, and these imaged molecules are then translated into digital molecules. And those are used, and the labels on those molecules are used to perform a de novo assembly of, in this case, the human genome. What we can then do, the de novo assembly of our current sample can then be compared to the reference genome uh, here depicted in green and any deviation in uh, label distance uh, could then be used to, to call a structural variant. And we can not only call a, stru a structural variant as shown here, but in fact, we can find all the different types of structural variants. So those are relatively simple gains and losses as deletions and insertions, uh, various copy number changes. There we can even distinguish repeat array expansions and tandem duplications. And interesting enough, we're also able to find balanced events, such as inversions or translocations. We, in our lab in Nijmegen, have roughly one year experience with optical mapping by BioNano. Um, what we've done so far is we've run 85 samples with constitutional cytogenetic aberrations, and we've run close to 50 leukemia samples all of which came from our diagnostic unit or of our collaborators uh, and have been previously analyzed with a standard of care assays and uh, have been compared to those. So all the aberrations that previously have been found usually by combinations of fish, karyotyping and CNV microarrays uh, have now been run on BioNano. And the question is, can we find all the known clinically relevant aberrations back? However, in addition, we've also run some research projects, so we couldn't resist to also use BioNano to identify some hidden structural variants in some of our unsolved research cases. For that, we've run uh, roughly 50 samples belonging to 20 projects, and uh, five out of those 20 projects already have uh, a very interesting lead, or I would even consider it as being solved now. And for each of those three, uh, I, uh, I, three projects, I will now highlight a uh, few examples for you. So starting for the concordance of constitutional aberrations. In order to achieve that, uh, we've teamed up uh, with three labs in France, and all of that was coordinated by the wonderful Leila el Uh Together with the French team, uh, we've analyzed a total of 85 samples processed in three different laboratories, uh, they all together harbored uh, previously identified 100 aberrations, which are summarized in the table on the left. And those samples really represent the daily routine uh, in a highly qualified cytogenetics lab. And those range from full aneuploides to relatively simple deletions, duplications, but certainly also include several translocations, inversions, 
and even complex events like isochromosomes, ring chromosomes, or truly really complex aberrations. And here's just one first example. This is how the data is represented by BioNano's uh, software. And usually we see the data on the first glimpse in such a genome-wide circus plot. So in the outer ring, you'll see the ideograms sorted from chromosome 1 uh, to 22, and then X and Y. The next ring in the middle is showing all the called ASVs, as depicted here, um, in orange, green, blue, uh, and purple. Then we see the next ring, a C and V track, and then in the middle, a track for translocations. And in this particular case, there was no translocation. But if you look carefully at the sex chromosomes, we can directly see in the C and V profile that this is a sample from a man with Kleinfelter syndrome, and the karyotype 47XXY is clearly identified in the C and V profile. On the next slide, you see three additional examples of aberrations that have been found. Those reach from relatively simple and straightforward microdeletions, as depicted in the top. Those are usually all called by the CNV tool that BioNano offers, but in addition also the SV tool. In the middle, you also see a translocation uh, that disrupts, in this case, a gene. And down on the bottom, you see an example for an inversion that is clearly called. Just to sum this study up, we've now used various sample types as inputs, and those are various types of blood, EBV cell lines, fibroblasts, coronic villi, so really representing the portfolio of samples that we usually get in our laboratory. We found it quite easy and straightforward to analyze those samples. Uh, I should add that robotonian translocations or translocations with a balanced translocation with a break point in the centromere were beyond the scope of this current study. And as a highlight for this study, for all the 100 aberrations, we found 100% concordance between BioNano's results and the karyotyping CNV microarrays and fish that have been previously performed. If you're interested in details of this study, this was just uploaded to BioArchive, and I'd invite you to look at all the details. Furthermore, we've, we were also interested to compare optical mapping uh, for leukemia samples, probably even more interesting for this particular audience. Um, also, this is already a paper that have been, has been released uh, to BioArchive. So I, again, I'd like to invite you to look at all the details because I can't show you all of that. But in a nutshell, uh, we used 48 leukemia samples and checked for all their clinically relevant acquired and somatic structural variants that have been previously analyzed and identified, usually by a combination of karyotyping fish and CMB microarrays. And again, similar to the constitutional aberrations, we reach 100% concordance. Uh, and that was in particular true for all the variant allele fractions or somatic aberrations that were found in more than 10% of all alleles. Just to also give you some highlights, here we had a case with a known uh, translocation between chromosomes 11 and 14. On the left-hand side, you see the circus plot genome white. This is the translocation that was previously known. Here is a zoom into chromosome 11 and 14. And if I would just click on this purple line indicating the translocation, I'm directly guided to the map that depicts this translocation. And in this case, uh, the map of our sample is represented in blue, and you can clearly see that on the top, this map is mapping to the reference chromosome 11, while this part of the map maps to chromosome 14. And in addition, we can even see uh, that that is uh, very close in terms of breakpoint to the IgH gene and the gene CCND1 on chromosome 11. Uh, usually, that holds true for most of our translocations here, the breakpoint resolution gives us a resolution of just a very few KB. Uh, in addition, we can even zoom into the map, just click on it, and then we see all the molecules uh, of the sample that support this map. And as such, we can understand how reliable a certain map or call is, but we can also uh, appreciate from that how many molecules in the sample carry that aberration and as such determine the variant allele fraction quite accurately. Speaking of translocations, there were several CML cases included in this study, and obviously for CML, uh, the Philadelphia chromosome that leads to a BCR-ABLE1 fusion uh, 
is one of the hallmark aberrations. There were three cases involved uh, in this study, included in this study, that carried such an event. And you can see the able breakpoints of all three samples on the left-hand side. Uh, and on the right-hand side, you see the VCR breakpoints. Um, and I dare to say that the breakpoint resolution we currently uh, receive from BioNano's results is already much better than that of traditional fish. Lastly, I just want to highlight that some of the leukemia samples are incredibly complex. Here we see a sample that's presented with chromotrypsis of chromosome 8 and a monosomy of chromosome 7. Uh, on the right-hand side, you see a zoom to these two chromosomes. And if I were to even click for a further zoom to chromosome 8, we see the entire CNV profile and all the maps that connect newly fused pieces of this chromosome. So in theory, well, we haven't tried that, it would now be possible to walk from uh, map to map to reassemble the completely reshuffled chromosome 8. And that is quite incredible. Uh, there is a new feature in the BioNano software that produces a genome-wide array-like CNV profile. Just for comparison, you now see our standard of care Affymetrix array for this sample with a trisomy 12 and a smaller deletion of chromosome 13. And on the bottom, you see the BioNano profile, which is almost indistinguishable uh, from the standard of care array in this case. Finally, despite the fact that that is beyond the actual goal of the study, um, we find all the known aberrations back, but in addition, we occasionally find novel events that escape previous clinical detection. In this case, just as one example, uh, there is a potential fusion of the RUNX1 gene with the gene AGBL4. To my knowledge, those translocations have not been described in leukemia before. Nevertheless, that may be interesting uh, once we would find recurrences. Um, so again, all the potential novel fusions are added to our supplementary tables of our paper, so I invite you to have a look at those. Just to sum this part of my presentation up, I've now shown you data of 48 leukemia samples that have been previously tested by uh, usually a combination of karyotyping fish and or CNV microarrays. Those in detail consisted of 37 simple cases that had five or less aberrations, and in addition, 11 complex cases, which all presented with more than five aberrations. For all those cases, we reached 100% concordance for all the simplex cases, uh, and they are there to say that we very likely have a very low false positive rate. Um, so interpretation is relatively straightforward. For the complex cases, we also reached full concordance for 10 out of 11 cases. However, there was one extremely complex case where we missed three aberrations that have been identified um, previously. However, those are likely in a very little fraction of 10% or potentially even a little bit lower. What I also can add is for complex cases, BioNano now shows us probably the true underlying biology. And for a lot of events, we now appreciate that several events are much more complex than we initially thought based on the standard testing. In addition, we just played a little bit extra with the data. As many of you are aware, uh, loss of feature zygosity is still an important thing to be identified in leukemia samples. Uh, and although this is not a standard coding algorithm yet in the BioNano software, we just played with the SV data ourselves. And here you see all the SVs plotted along the size of chromosome one. And here we see a nice distribution of homozygous and heterozygous codes along the entire chromosome. However, this sample harbored a large loss of heterozygosity on chromosome seven. And here you may appreciate that the dotted line, which gives us an averaging window of five SV calls, really goes up for the entire Q arm. And we completely lack, uh, or almost completely lack, heterozygous calls. So as such, I dare to say that this is enabling us to also call large uh, regions uh, where we identify a loss of heterozygosity. Again, this is online at Bar Archive. And again, I'd be uh, inviting you to, to have a look at the details of this work. I just want to close with one of our research findings that we just had very recently. And this is a collaboration with my former colleague, Roland Kuiper and his group who now works in Utrecht. Roland has a, a particular interest in a disease known as ATRT, which stands for Atypical Teratoid Raptoid Tumors. 
And for those, uh, uh, those are very aggressive childhood cancers. And it is known that for roughly one third of cases, there is not uh, only two somatic mutations happening, but uh, there is rather one germline mutation present in those patients. And those would be germline mutations in a gene known as SMARC-B1. Roland and his group studied uh, this particular case, even via a diagnostic laboratory uh, where Sanger sequencing, MLPA, and whole exome sequencing was, was performed without identifying a suspected germline mutation. And in his research group, uh, standard whole genome sequencing was performed. And again, that did not identify any uh, mutation nor structural variant in SMARC-B1. So we received an EBV, EBV cell line from the case Roland's group was studying, performed by a nano-optical mapping, and we identified 35 rare structure variants genome-wide. However, once we zoomed in to the highly suspected locus of SMARC-B1, we directly spotted uh, that the wildcard distance for these two labels should be 5 kb. However, in the uh, assembly of this patient, we see that there was an insertion called as being 2.8 kb in size and delivering one extra label in the inserted material. Um, so we suspect that this highly likely is the germline mutation that was looked for for so long. Um, and that is material of 2.8 kb inserted somewhere between introns 1 and 3 of the SMARC-B1 gene. In the meantime, we have validated this case by HIFI genome sequencing using the PEGBIO SQL2 sequencer. And that, first of all, confirmed uh, that this is an insertion of exactly 2,763 base pairs in intron 1 of SMARC-B1. And furthermore, the sequence context told us that this is an insertion of an SVAE retrotransposon. So as such, this really confirmed that this is the hidden germline structure variant that gives strong predisposition to ATRT. This already brings me to my summary slide. I hope I could show you today uh, that we reach full concordance for constitutional aberrations once analyzing uh, with Bionano's optical mapping. The same holds true for leukemia samples, in particular if you reach an allele fraction uh, of 10% uh, and higher, and there is luckily improvements uh, that even allow a uh, much more sensitive identification of structural variants. Uh, as such, from these two studies, we dare to predict that there's quite a potential for BioNano to replace classical cytogenetics, uh, and as such, I refer to karyotyping, arrays, and FISH. Uh, I'm also uh, very interested in the opportunities that BioNano offers for research, and our first results are really encouraging that we start identifying hidden structure variants that escaped most previous tests. So in total, for research and diagnostics, I, I dare to say that optical mapping may allow a cytogenetics revolution. And there it helps that there's new innovations coming from BioNano that may enable us to run uh, this at lower price per sample and even higher coverage. Uh, and I've seen first data uh, that allows us to find somatic mutations in less than 1% variant in glial fraction. So that is highly encouraging. With that, I would like to thank you for your attention, uh, but not without thanking all my wonderful colleagues. Um, those are my colleagues in Nijmegen, obviously, but also our great French collaborators. Again, that was a consortium in France um, coordinated by Leila El Katabi. And again, the entire Bionano team uh, in Nijmegen, as well as the group of Roland Kaipe in Utrecht. And again, I'd like to thank you for your interest in our work Unfortunately, I can't answer questions live today, but if you have any questions, please refer to my email address at the bottom of the slide. Thank you very much.